Welcome. Not yet. Ten Why? seconds. Ten seconds? Yeah. Okay. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed to clap. No, you're not supposed to. <laughs> yes, you are. You told me to. Honey, I said not today because we don't have the mics. They don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I did. <laughs> okay, let's start again. Welcome. Welcome to, to another, another episode of, of Driving to, to the Res with your favorite Wait a host. minute. What? They can clearly see we're not driving anywhere. That's true. Whatever. With your favorite yes. hosts. Emilia, Emilia and Larry. Larry. <laughs> see, I got my psychic skills going today. Because <laughs> okay. I didn't, who knows who's first, you or me, when we're saying it. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Till it happens, and then... Then it happens. When it happens, if you've got your skill set, you get it right. Yeah. you got a 50-50 <laughs> chance. <laughs> it's pretty good odds. Very good odds. Every now and then. We get it right. We get it right. All right. So, today's format's a tiny bit different. It my is nose, a I have some paper in my hands. Yeah. It's not the format. Yeah, the format's different. It is very different. Because usually when we start... I mostly I have sometimes I have a little whiteboard that has some things that happen during the some week bullet that, points you know I remember mm -hmm. that I really want to talk about or mm -hmm. ask you about or you know massage Discuss, and yeah. other times you'll ask me hey what are we going to talk about and I'll say I don't really don't know and then we'll sit down and then once we sit down and start it comes yeah and sometimes we have a whole plan and then we start the, the podcast and something completely different comes through the whole thing tossed out everything the window. everything yeah Yes, this time what we have planned is a, what we call a, a coordinated effort. Yes, of the email that's coming out email on Monday. That's coming out on Monday. And the podcast, and the podcast being coming out too. Monday. Their topics are the same. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, sub stacks and all those other things, walk with me now. All of the things will have the thing. Yes. All of the and things we'll be will talking have the thing. about the same thing on all of the things. All of the things. Right. And the reason is it's like prime. It. It's prime. <laughs> we want to try it. We like because it. We like it. We well, decided to do give it. Give me a bigger reason. Oh, a bigger reason, more important reason. Yeah. Uh, we felt it was a key topic that needed to be explored. And the exploration expanded into the human collective this week. Okay. September. Plus it has, it's a seven step and a three question. Yes. Yeah, three questions. Which makes a ten. Is a ten a good, no. good numerology number? Well, it's a three. Yeah, there's three questions. Three questions I have to ask. And seven steps. And there's a seven step guide. Yes. Those are all good things for your little, uh, brings it in to look at it. Yes. Helps if you have, like, okay, I can do three. I can, th I can do three. I can answer three questions. Seven steps. Yep, I got that. I can do seven. It's like pushing how many I can do, but seven. So long they're written down, I can do them. Yes, that works. And so we have written it down. Yeah, we did. It'll come in a newsletter. Yes. And I'm going to read it. Well, well we're going to read bits, we're going to read bits of it and expand on them. Yes, yeah. that's a good idea. All right. So, so we talked about this on the 22nd of August, 2022. That's a lot of two, 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 two. Yeah, no, I thought it was cool. And uh, what it was, was we talked about our prime purpose. Yes. Because many times it's apparent we, uh, you know, cover up our prime purpose with all our other purposes. We do. And we mistake our other purposes for to our be prime, a purpose. prime purpose. Yeah. Or to be a prime purpose. Like my prime purpose is to teach people this. Or prime purpose is to catch fish. Or, or to provide for my family. Or raise a family. Or raise a frequency. They're all secondary, family. actually. Right. They're all secondary to your actual prime purpose. Yes. And when you embody your prime purpose, everything else becomes appropriately prioritized. <laughs> yes. Appropriately prioritized by us. Right. Or at least that's the. The idea. the idea and the hope. The idea, right. You can you can embody the prime purpose and allow the other purposes that you've gathered their correct, I guess, level of attention. Yes. 
They're, they're as important as you want to make them, but only as important as your prime purpose. Great. Something like that. So one of the ways to gauge our prime purpose is through asking ourselves these three questions. Not gauge our prime purpose, but gauge our... Um, grasp um, the topic, maybe? Maybe grasp, but maybe how well we are. Yes. Embodying our prime purpose. Right. That's by exactly. asking these three questions. Yeah. Let's have a look at them. All right. The three questions. If the physical universe is not presently reflecting back high frequency experiences to us, then what exactly is it doing? Is it reflecting back? Hmm. One of the things that people often say, <laughs> yeah. right? Have you yeah. heard it? Oh, everybody's just mirroring back to you what you're giving out. Yeah, reflecting back. Reflecting your, back, yeah. What you're emitting. Yeah. Most yeah. people, a lot of people say that. And unfortunately, that is not always accurate. It's not always accurate. And... Um, is it sometimes accurate? Sometimes, but not, not always. Okay. The other one that also taps into that little misconception is the one where people say anything you don't like about another person is you don't like it because it's part of you. You are you are that. You are that that, that you don't like. So mm -hmm. that's why uh, it's yeah. noticeable in someone else. Yeah. So that also is very false information. The things are actually not even related to each other. So the bit about reflection. Um, and I, you know, I plan to talk more about this and we plan to do more discussions about this simply from the perspective of the split, right? The split is exactly this. The split is exactly having, stepping into a physical universe so that we can reflect back that frequency that we are. That's why we came here and... The choice of having those type of experiences is also that, you know, that, that experience that we wanted to come and have. And for, for thousands of years, we were born on Earth, not me personally, but other people, um, and my physical body, elemental also, to have like dark experiences, which meant that the person was open to have experiences of frequencies they did not have but they could go somewhere where they could have them that experience just just to put it into plain english the experiences she's talking about are the ones that you've had in your life up to now yes and probably however many incarnations before mm -hmm. so the regular old this is my life on the yeah. planet earth and i have I a job struggle. and i've got some struggles and i overcome Stress. them I've got some Suffering. predators, and I gotta predators avoid being eaten. And I've got some triggers, triggers and fears. I need to process and do them. And yeah. This is the life that yeah. you have that you've yeah. lived up to now. Yeah. So that's the like, like dark real. Okay. I did think that maybe you know the three questions might it might be okay to refresh what the prime purpose was. Yes, because <laughs> it kind of so. skipped past that into we you did. Know, yeah. What is the prime purpose, honey? As it's written in here, so you cannot forget, our prime purpose is how we are here as high frequency beings, those of those us who are listening and reading this, to express our true frequency in this world and have that frequency reflected back to us in the form of high frequency experiences in the physical universe. Right. So the first question, after having just heard that, is if the physical universe if the physical universe is not presently reflecting back high frequency experiences to us then what exactly is it doing is it reflecting back right so that that's an interesting question right mm -hmm. now that we have the context right. <laughs> you know it's like um a lot of cultures at the moment um, and religions and teachings teach the person that they're bad and they're sinful and they're nasty yeah. and they're horrible. So the person integrates that belief system and those are the things that get reflected back to them. And one of the things that are, is interesting to me about that is what's so interesting about it? You know, it's like, <laughs> and why would we 
take that on board. Take that on board. I mean, it's curiosity. You know, curiosity really does drive this human collective. But what drives the propagators of that system to infuse this type of energy on the planet? Before you go too far, that's mm -hmm. almost like the third, second question. Let's have a look at the second question. Is it reflecting anything of ours at all? Or are we the pawns in someone else's reflection of their frequency and conscious choices? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're not taking conscious choices, if your choices are made out of programs, um, teachings, dogmas, belief systems that you have integrated mm -hmm. from society, then probably very likely you're a pawn <laughs> yeah. in someone else's desire. Experience yeah. willing, willing pawn, yeah, right, willing and in, in know, an unconscious way, most some, of them, mostly, most yeah. Of them. I've met some very... who's like, you know, I'm happy, just tell me what to do, exactly. Yes, then I really, I really don't want to have to think about it too much. I would mm -hmm. just rather do whatever it is that I'm here to do mm -hmm. and just tell me what that is, please. Yep, uh, yep. oh, very, it's to wash dishes, true. okay, I'll do, I'll do, the dishes. I'll do that. Yeah. It's to um, this, it's to um, that, okay. That that makes me happy. Not have to worry about it. Yeah. It's not. There's a. I don't know if I'm going to say there's something or nothing wrong with it, but it is what it is, right? Yeah. It is. Okay. Yeah. And if you're in an environment where the people you ask to tell you what to do are all high frequency, you're pretty safe. You're going to have high frequency experiences reflecting back their frequency. Mm -hmm. But if you're in an environment where there's exploiters and low frequency beings, eh, things might not go so well for you. <laughs> Probably right. It will be a power over others yeah. thing. Yeah. So it's okay to be guided in a high frequency way by high frequency beings. Mm -hmm. It's not likely they're going to take advantage of you. Right. Um, that's not in their makeup. Mm -hmm. So it's like, hey, yeah, let's, um, you know what you should do? You should um, pull those weeds <laughs> and then I'll plant some potatoes. potatoes and we can have potato salad later. Yeah, that's how it would go. Yes. <laughs> Nothing wrong with following directions. Right. <laughs> right. But who is the directions from? Mm -hmm. So question that's kind one. of that kind of leads to question three. Okay, let's have a look at it. And if so, how do we get out of being a pawn and step into being the true creator of our own reality? Mm -hmm. hmm. It seems like that hits this point of how many creators of reality can there be at the same time? Ooh, there's gazillions, gazillions of creators of reality. That's why we have so many rules of engagement in place. And um, those rules of engagement actually are in a class. Yes, my favorite <laughs> one in the whole world. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't know about it. Go to nearlyevents.com, go to the store and search okay. rules of engagement. The rules of engagement, yeah. <laughs> Probably yes. Ilya will put a link of it somewhere. Probably. It's super. So when you go through those three questions, you know, it can raise discussion. Mm -hmm. It can make you think it's supposed to. And uh, and then it brings you to a point where sometimes you like, you know, I can, all right, all right, I, I can fiddle my way through this. But it also gives you the opportunity to be open to have an even better experience of the physical universe. Maybe a um, seven-step right. guide answering the question of number three. Yeah. How do you step out of being a pawn and become the true creator of your own reality? Yeah. And also, one of the aspects of this is that often when we think about that or we read the sentence, we might think it's an absolute pawn. Yep. Like you're completely enslaved. And most people will say, no, I'm not actually completely enslaved. I'm awake and I have my choices and I'm in charge of my life. Yeah. So this goes to degrees. Right. It's not absolutes. No, it's not absolutes. So you're not just a pawn and just a slave. It could be that you're a one percent slave, you know, <laughs> into or ten percent programmed. You know, it could be just yeah, percentages. Because uh, you stand up, just got to, yeah. got to stand up and maybe do that. Yeah. It's like, why? Where did I that have come to. from? Sorry. Or even feel really bad if you don't. Oh, you definitely know. feel bad if you or don't. Or wonder what people are thinking about you if you don't. That type of thing. Or know what they're thinking about you. Yeah. You're a traitor. Yeah. 
or whatever. That, you know, it could be that. That's your 1%? That yeah, could be 1%, that could be 1%, 1%. on there. Or it could be that you believe that you are here to save everybody on the planet. You know? Yeah, that could be yeah. put there. That mm -hmm. would be one of those ones that you're going to easily be, you know, manipulated with. It could be that you believe that... Um, that's, uh, the, that's where the saying, I think, the, the welfare of the masses is the alibi of tyrants. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then you might think perhaps that money is evil. That could be your 1% enslavement. 1%. You know? should, should I give you, go through some of these um, seven steps? Because yes. I think Let's the first step is what we're talking about, which is first become aware of what's happening. Yes. Yeah. First step, step one, become aware of what's happening. Realize that for the majority of your life, with mostly subconscious agreements, others have used you as pawns to create energy that feeds low frequency experiences. Hmm. Through filtering your perceptions, emotions, and choices via limiting and corrupted reaction programs. Stress, for example, is not natural. Did you know that? I always thought it was fuel for going stuff. Yeah, yeah, fuel to carry. It's a good strong why. Mm -hmm. Stress, stress. Stress. You have stress, and you use that stress as fuel instead of like to stop you. Mm. Stress is like. Uh, what do you think about stress now? It's bullshit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> stress, okay. for example, is not natural. Stress is you reacting at a pawn level. As we see it, we have power to stop it. Yes. So basically, the becoming aware, that's just an example. An example yeah, yeah, is, yeah. if you're feeling stress in your life, it means there's a percentage of enslavement that is still act, acting within programmings, and conscious programmings usually, in your life. Something contrary to your prime purpose yes. is being pushed. Yes. And you're... Um, body's telling you no, no. and your something else, your ponishness, ponishness yeah. is telling you, oh yes, you have to, yeah, and so that creates that <laughs> stress. Yeah, yeah. I find a lot of people have stress around work. Yeah, but so that's an example. Yeah. Am I going to have a job tomorrow? Um, am I going to get sacked? It's um, the the economy gonna collapse, and then everybody. I'm gonna be out of a job, or even if I do have my job, my wage is not gonna be worth anything. So what's the point? What's the point? But also, but I need I to pay to. my mortgage, and I have to pay for my kids' food and clothes, and my husband or my wife. And I need to save for the future, but how do I save for the future if there's no money and yeah. I can't save? Yeah. And my bank account's gone, and the money's worthless. Well, how yeah. am I saving? Right. Stress. Stress. So even that. That. Is a level of stress that people, many people around the planet are under. And it is artificial. It's on purpose. It's on purposely made, pulled in from all sorts of unconscious or from subliminal ways. And the person integrates that stress, right? Recognize it's not for you. Mm -hmm. It's because not for you. And you it's not natural. You're listening to yeah. this, right? Yeah. Are here to embody this prime purpose. Right. This isn't so, for that. Exactly. It's so for those who need the other. So if other. if you're getting that right now, and you know you've chosen the light paradigm, and you're here to embody your high frequency, your natural frequency, then that's the question you have to ask yourself. If I'm here to embody my natural frequency, which is very high, then how come I have all these stresses in my exactly. life? Why? And just asking that why, and why isn't it easy right now for you, then you become more aware. So you expand your awareness. Yes. Instead of diving into the stress and, you know, you know, there are substances many people use to relieve their stress, which are, you know, also part of the stacking equation. the negatives on top of the negatives to keep keep you who want to stay asleep asleep right it's the tool to keep you in the light dark reality that's right. for those who chose that yeah and if okay. you didn't choose it you just start it's not becoming for aware. you it's not for you so two become aware that we use our minds and emotions which are being controlled by those programs to make moment-to-moment -moment decisions 
It is what controls our perception of the world and reality and convinces us that low frequency is normal. Back to the stress example. You were taught that it's normal to feel stress, even though when you first felt it, you knew something was off. Something's, something's off about this. Right. This isn't a normal feeling. Why mm -hmm. would I feel this normally? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> it leads right to three. Our program perception is constantly fed. Yes. So the perception of what is reality, the perception of what your life should be, the perception even of what your life is, right? All of these perceptions feed your mind and your emotional body. And then in, you interpret the physical universe through those perceptions. Right. And then, you know, we're... In some ways, the steadiness of the reality we exist in, the one that allows linear time to exist and experiences to follow, experience to follow, experience. Not like a dream world, you know, where there's no linear A to B to C. You have an experience and another one and another one. And they're not really connected. This is more of a steady linear stream of experiences, right? In order to keep that, there are things that are kind of taken advantage of to, to I guess, um, hold the linear experience of light dark real in the existence and those are like data information energy visual sound food drink substances chemicals stress all these things movies newscasts facebook feeds books promoted by the media so this is the number one book in the whole world <laughs> how did it get to be the number one book in the world world because we told you it, it is. is yeah have yeah. you ever read those? I read one. Oh once yeah, I have. I was like, of times. "Oh my god, how can this become a number one seller? Yeah. Like, it's impossible. Why would that happen?" But that's what's needed to keep mm -hmm. human being natural frequency at like dark real and mm -hmm. continuously having it reflected. It requires that. Yeah. And remember, eighty percent or thereabouts, seventy percent or thereabouts of the planet wants that to continue. So it requires a lot of input. To yes. keep it there, or else it would it just collapse. Collapse all by itself. Huh? <clears throat> yeah, it would collapse because it's the artificial creation. Exactly. So, number four. I think we're ready to move to that. Okay. You step from reaction to response. Yes. That sounds um, pretty basic. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes, <laughs> our reactions are what we respond to, <laughs> not we well, respond to our, you know, yeah. we take a reaction and then respond to the reaction. Yeah. Instead okay. of taking the <clears throat> data and responding in a way that is in alignment with our prime purpose. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So after we realize that perception is programmed by inputs in our minds and emotions, we stop reacting and start responding. We no longer allow others to dictate how we think about and feel about the world moment to moment. We no longer engage in and feed that low frequency programming perception of reality. We start being diligent and start perceiving how we program ourselves. We realize, for example, how in every single movie and show we have ever watched in the last 10 years, people deal with stress by drinking alcohol. It comes in so fast in so many ways that we may think it's actually true. We may think that alcohol is good, reduces stress, and helps you in your life. Well, guess what? It's not. It makes things much, much worse. <laughs> That's an interesting... I wanted to use that example because... It's it insidious. Is so, I know, and it's so well programmed in, and it actually does make everything worse. I can't tell you how many times I watch people on the TV get a big glass of whiskey, <laughs> plug it down... Now everything's better, and they didn't fall over, and they didn't choke to death, and it tasted like, <laughs> well, whiskey. they drank it like water. Yeah. It certainly didn't taste like whiskey, but I don't know if you've ever tried to drink a glass of whiskey before. <laughs> Only if you were already sauced up could you possibly pretend that you did that. Because mm -hmm. it, <laughs> it doesn't work like that. No. But you believe by watching it that you can do that, and you try it, and you think, something's wrong with me. Mm-hmm. That's how I felt. I was like, I wonder what's wrong with me because this tastes like crap and I can barely breathe. 
<laughs> and choking it. <laughs> yeah, you're choking it out and spitting it out, and you de- can't believe it's you would do that. How is that helping? Yeah, I don't know, but it does. Yeah, right. Another one I hear often Crazy. is when when people drink beer and it says it's because it's hot and it's so refreshing, and I'm like, it actually, it's not true. Beer is not refreshing. The um, ice it was in is refreshing. <laughs> the coldness. The is. coldness it was in, but. It, the substance itself is kind of sticky and stinks. Yeah, not refreshing at all. Yeah. yeah you know, and the program is it so... It dehydrates you, know, you yeah. and the dehydration isn't exactly helpful with heat. No, it doesn't help you with the heat at all. But you're pretty sure if you're going to go do something in the hot, you better have a cooler, yeah. a Yeti and a Yeti full of silver bullets. <laughs> right, <called>. yeah. <laughs> So a Yeti is a cooler. cooler Silver bullets are cooler's lights. If right. you don't know. And um, the one that got me as a teenager was Coca Cola. They used to say refreshing and cool, and it, it will hydrate you and all these type of things. And it's got caffeine, it'll energize caffeine, you, and energize sugar you. give you a good, give you a boost. Yeah. So I fell for that one. I didn't feel for the fell for the beer or wine one, but certainly fell for the Coca Cola one. And um, it was never true. I never felt better after drinking a Coca-Cola. And it was the coldness of it. If I had drank just a glass of water with all that ice, it would have been better, you know, more hydrating and everything. Yeah. Than yeah. all the sugars and all the other nasty stuff that added to the toxins of the heat, you know. So these programs come in and they they kind of go into your, your mind or your perceptions and then... Because we naturally, as humans, we learn through copying, we believe it. Why would anybody lie to us, right? Because we're light beings, we believe that stuff. And we do it, and we fall for it. And then we get sick, and then we become alcoholics, and then we become embodied with creatures and entities that are not ourselves. And, oh my God, it just spins down, you know, really bad. Yeah, the ones that come from that aren't high frequency no 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 they're not here to embody uh Ooh, right and that, the other one that <laughs> i felt was really insane yeah. was that good food food that's good for you tastes horrible that was a program and it is and a lot of people believe it right food that's good for you tastes horrible it tastes of cardboard it's tasteless and it's hot nasty yeah and i couldn't believe it it's like what? I don't understand what's happening here. Why would they? Why would they make food that's so horrid? You know, and yeah, that's because medicine is good for you. Is good for you, and it tastes terrible. That's another there's program. one. Yeah, another program. Right. Yeah. Well, I was just watching yesterday, uh, pizza dough, pizza dough teacher. He teaches how to make pizza dough, like really mm-hmm. good. I haven't done it yet, mm-hmm. but I love to watch how it is, you know. Yeah. And he uh, has a friend who lives in Rome, and he told him, these are the three best pizza places I know in Rome. You got to go try them. And so he went to go try them, and he sat down, and he had pizzas. And uh, he himself, the guy sitting there, is like, see the chefs, the cooks here? They all eat this pizza every day. And look how fit they are and strong, because they're all, I mean, they're all strong-looking, strong strong <laughs> very fit guys, and they're eating the yummiest pizza you could ever imagine with uh-huh. the deliciousest ingredients. The tomatoes fresh off the vine from a special place in Italy, of course. And all of the oils and all of the yumminesses. It's health food. Yeah. Ultimate exactly. health food. And it's so delicious he can barely speak after a bite. <laughs> Every pizza yeah. was better than the one before, yeah. which is impossible because each one was impossibly good. Mm-hmm. That's how health yeah. food is. And the other program that comes seen through food also is how we have programmed our physical bodies to, th- to think, I've had a meal, this is food. And this other thing is not food, right? Yeah. So recently I've been going through a special diet because I'm doing a health uh, reset and it, ne- it needs some detoxing. So there's a lot of things that uh, I, I normally eat, but I cannot eat or I mustn't, I choose not to eat for the week or whatever that this process lasts. And there was other things that were allowed, right? And one of the interesting aspects that I found was that I was eating 
a really nice, yummy, yummy meal made out of the ingredients that I can eat, right? Yep. That Larry made for me. And it was all the ingredients that I can eat. And it was really delicious. And I was eating it and my body kept saying, that's not food. We need a proper meal after this. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, what are you talking about? Why would you say this is not food? Because it doesn't have X, Y, and Z. No, 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 no. This is food. Okay. And she's like, oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, this is food. Oh, well, we really like it. <laughs> right. And then she started feeling satisfied. Yeah. So it's just an, an, a tiny little program that somehow it got in there. This is not food. Right. And then turning that into this is actually food and it's a meal changed everything. It was just a little conversation. You it's had a little yourself. conversation I had with my body. And she, when she understood, and then I thought, hmm, interesting. So the process here is to re reprogram my physical body to know what food is. Interestingly, number five yes. is we take back control. Yes. Exactly what you said. We yes. do that by taking control of our ingestion of data and food and stepping into conscious response. Data comes in many forms. From the food, the drink, the air we bring into our bodies, to the emotions, data, and information we ingest with our eyes and ears and emotional and energy bodies, we become aware of what we are sh what we are allowing in into our lives. Stop allowing low frequency items in and start searching for and feeding ourselves with high frequency items only. And when that stress data comes in and triggers inside of us, we use the fear processing exercise on it instead of keeping it by taking drugs or alcohol or having sleepless nights. We, six, stop reacting in low-frequency ways while interacting with ourselves or others. Mm -hmm. So can you think of any ways that for number five, take back control? Take back control. The input of data. Can you think of any examples or stories? One way would be to take uh take take control of what we would consider our binges you know a lot of people will binge watch something or binge eat something or binge something, drink something. binge drink something and they will find they have lost control over the go go stop part of it mm -hmm. and uh as a consequence of that binge they will begin i've seen it a million times like we watch um a show on Netflix or something like that. It'll be 10 episodes and it'll start out really good. And then somehow it turns like, what yes, the heck yeah. are we watching? But we're stuck in it. And we got to yeah. watch some more. We've got to watch some more. we got to yes. watch some more. And by the end of it, we're like, we got to stop that off. I can't yeah. watch any more of this. You need to take a shower. we got to either watch something good for a minute, and... go take a bath, or yes. turn on some music or something. It's like... Spray sage and sage the house. <laughs> Jesus, yeah. It's like, we fell for it. We did. Yeah. And we are of the nature that's like, well, hopefully it turns good again. Because yes. that was so interesting that first time. Because you're part. a light worker. <laughs> you're a light worker. You always think the best of everything. So it's going to turn good again. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the little tricks of taking back control that you did was when you found that we're watching something. And we haven't been watching anything for a long time, but we did. And when we would watch a show, it would turn uh, you would fast forward. Yes. And then stop again and see, okay, is it back to okay? Nope. That's okay, is it back yet? No. Yeah. So we'd skip past the nasty. nasty and just hang out with the part that we were interested in, which basically was the bait. Yes. We and really then, enjoyed the bait, but, you know, not so much Did you much notice that hook. as the series went on, the There's feeling less. of it, and there was only tiny little bits of interesting and then even none, do you remember that? Like, and then we even stopped watching entirely because yes, we didn't get it. hooked. Right. We ate the bait, but we missed the hook. Yeah. That's kind of taking control. And now at this point, almost all of the shows are just all Nasty. hook. Yeah. Not much bait left. Right. I mean, they don't even pretend they to They don't start. even pretend, yeah. They don't even pretend anymore. So it's very obvious that it's not for you, not for you, not for you, not for you. So, yeah, taking back control is, you know, avoiding what's not for you. And uh, acknowledging when you, you... You can take a sip. You can take a look. And you're like, hmm, prime purpose and this. It seems like this isn't doing... Mm -hmm. This isn't it. Not for me. Yeah. Not for me. This is for somebody else to keep them... In the low frequency, high low, or the keep them in the reality that we're in. 
This is for someone else. Yeah. It's to help them stay where they want to stay. Mm -hmm. It's not for me. That seems it. Yeah. Okay. So, that's six. We stop reacting in low-frequency ways while interacting with ourselves or others. We instead focus on and feed high-frequency interactions, emotions, thoughts, and projects. Projects is good. Mm -hmm. Because we are in a split, there will be invitations to low-frequency reactions. They're still coming. We just say, no, that's not for me. When we feel low-frequency thoughts and emotions, we can simply ask ourselves, does this person or this situation control how I feel right now, or I am, am I choosing to feel this way? Who is control right now? Are they in control of how you feel, or are you in control of how you feel? Mm -hmm. Are you going to respond to a low-frequency invitation by feeling righteous anger, whatever? Is that your that, that's your prime purpose? Or no, that's not my prime purpose. Mm -hmm. Go have that reality. That one's yours. I'm I'm not a part of that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one of the examples for this, I mean, it's very simple. Uh, when my um, adult kids now they were little. Uh, one of them came up to me crying and said, my brother said blah, 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 mommy, <laughs> tell them to stop saying blah, blah, blah. And I said, okay, so what you're telling me is that your brother dictates how you are feeling. Now you're upset right now, right? Yeah. Because of what he said. Yeah. So he, he's the boss. Well, he's the boss of how you feel. Is that what you're saying? Um. <laughs> yeah it was like click 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 no well then so it doesn't matter what he says right no <laughs> <laughs> but it's like a toddler or a tiny child's example but actually we carry that well even today Ever, you might be yeah, lots of somebody people. says something you get upset somebody does something you get upset and then you carry that anger with you and what does that mean? It means they, they, they won. They dictate how you feel. They went to trigger you and they did. And now they dictate how you feel. They control, control you. So, yeah, taking that back and when you do get engaged in low frequency emotions in yourself, even if you react for a while, eventually you will respond because you're aware of it now. And then say, look at, think, or oh, did I choose to do that? Did I choose to get angry? Or was it them that dictated that I get angry, you know? Am I falling for this? Do I choose it? What do I choose, actually? Do I like being angry? Right? And some people get, you know, get stimulated and like being angry, but other people, not so much. Um. So, but even the ones that like being angry, um, you can really choose when to be angry right so being angry when you're meeting a new friend or or no friend or talking to a child or you know you're holding a baby at the time it's not a good thing or even your dog right mm -hmm. but being angry let's say when you're climbing a mountain or you're doing other stuff then that's your choice but make sure it's your choice and not somebody else's choice to make you angry. Because when you, usually when you get angry, you lose control. You're out of control. And then when you're out of control, somebody else is in control. Oh, that's a good... Because control is always there. So if you're not in control, then somebody else definitely is. And that somebody else could be an, an energetic being that's feeding off that love frequency in your body. So. Yeah, I've heard of that plenty of times where... People have gotten themselves in low frequency situations and made a deal with a, another low frequency entity to help them out of this bad thing, whatever mm. it is, and sort sort of it kind of like perpetuates more bad things. So you have a constant need for this thing to help you. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that's not what I wanted. No. <laughs> right. Well, I think this segues perfectly into seven. Okay. Which is. We step into who we really are. Yes. We realize we are high frequency beings who were born on Earth at this time not to pretend to be victims or aggressors, 
to step all over others or be stepped on by others, but instead to express our true frequency at all times and allow the human collective and the universe to reflect that true frequency back to us in the form of experiences. We... Oh. Why did you get lost? Yeah. <laughs> Did you want to start again? <laughs> All right. That's a good one. Yes, let's start again. We'll start again. Ready? Yes. Okay, keep track on me, honey. Hold on. Okay, okay. Hold I'm on. holding them to you. I'm holding them to you so you don't okay. get lost. We realize we are high-frequency beings who were born on Earth at this time not to pretend to be victims or aggressors, to step all over others or be stepped on by others, but instead to express our true frequency at all times and allow the human collective and the universe to reflect that true frequency back to us in the form of experiences, life, reality, every second of our lives from this day forth. The energy of allowance is here. It's key. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath and for a few seconds or minutes, simply allow the universe to reflect back to you your highest and most pure frequency, the frequency that is at the core of your being, the one untouched, by programs of low-frequency experiences. Hey, this is your word. <laughs> Boom! Boom! <laughs> the, the last bit there is really key because it bypasses any low-frequency programs that you're still carrying. Because often, if we don't have that little sentence at the end, the persons at a subconscious level, we start reflecting back through their programs because they're still carrying them, okay? And they would love frequency stuff. Do you want to read that last sentence again, honey? Okay, okay. Do you remember what it is? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> good thing it's written. Yes, it's good job it's written. The, uh, uh, which where? Oh. The, it's allow the air to be your husband's yes. one? Okay. The energy of allowance is key. Close your eyes. Yes. Is your eyes closed? Yes. Okay. Take a deep breath. Now, for a few seconds, a few minutes, allow the universe to reflect back to you your highest and most pure frequency. The frequency that is at the core of your being, the one untouched by programs of low frequency experiences. So that's really important, that part. Did you see the part that's important? Yes. Which one? The untouched by programs of low frequency experiences exactly. part of your core. Exactly. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Your that highest, part. most pure frequency. That one. You want that one to be reflected back to you. That yeah. bit. Yeah. Whoa. Bit. Right? Oh. Whoa. <laughs> oh, it's, it's Whoa. Let's <laughs> get that one back again. <laughs> I think That's I a agree. Dream. So our power is going to go off any minute now. Again. Three times, four <laughs> times, on and on. That's off. a tree. <laughs> That's your... No, no, no. That's Gaia. This guy is saying with a tree crashing into the saying, Yes, 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 into the, into yes. The tables on the street. <laughs> See, it's still on. It was just exclamation points, babe. Yes, that's okay. amazing. All right. Hi. Okay. Mm -hmm. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Can't say more than boom, 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 boom. Yeah, that's true. You can kind of complete, aren't you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's. It's a, it's extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Very excellent job with this article. I'm glad that we will combine this article with this. You can read it, hear us talk about it, mm -hmm. embody it. There is one more step. Tell us the next step. You tell us. You okay. Tell us. Here's Here the next step. my glasses? We got this! Oh, yes. Make sure to share this article and the seven steps with the world. Print it out and post it at your local store. Oh, on the community board? Yes. Okay, that's good. This is what it's going to look like. Yeah, that's how If you're in the video. Yeah. Even just if you grab the, yeah, 
I actually just grab everything. Don't don't remove anything. <laughs> okay, just grab everything. Yes, you can also send it to all your friends, all the light workers that you can think of. Put it on all your media. Share the podcast, networks, and everything. And the link, mm -hmm. whatever. Share yeah. it. Share it. With share it. Share it. Those who share this prime purpose. Yes. If you think a person shares that prime purpose with you, right, then send it out to them. Incidentally, yes. by the way, when uh, more people are embodying the prime purpose and have it reflected back to them, you're mm -hmm. going to see it. Yeah. You're... So it's part of the process of sharing your prime purpose yes. with those who have that shared prime purpose. Exactly. Uh -huh. Because we're no, we're not alone in this. Right. I'm not alone in this. All right. <laughs> I think we're complete, honestly. Quite honestly, yes. Okay. Love, Love you, honey. darling.